is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash you. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the Alma Dyer. Of your Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vengeance. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation. Queen.
All right, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your second morning wake up call. So, as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A Shakur, and Twitter at D Goddess 27. All right. And if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know what to do. So let's get ready to get into it. Now, first things first. Let's talk about this college student who was missing, uh, but then turns out that she was murdered and her body was mutilated. Okay, so let's get into it. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. A harrowing trail of evidence led to an arrest in case of missing college students. Beautiful young lady. Let me share her picture on the screen. This is all very sad. This is the young woman right here. Beautiful young lady. She was missing. And then, as I said, she was found dead. Her body was deceased. And this is the killer right here. That's who did it. Maxwell Anderson. So let's get into it. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. And so when 19-year-old uh, Sade Robinson didn't show up for her shift at a Wisconsin pizza, re pizza restaurant on April the 2nd, her co-workers immediately suspected that something was wrong. The evening before, Robinson had planned a first date with Maxwell Anderson, age 33, uh, at a local seafood restaurant, according to a criminal complaint that was filed against Anderson. Arson in connection with excited she was okay now uh she texts anderson that she was feeling seafood and headed out to meet him at a seafood restaurant where he used to work uh, wearing ripped jeans and a white t-shirt according to the complaint the robinson was a vibrant extroverted presence at the pizza shuffle uh at the pizza shuttle uh manager justin romano described her to cnn affiliate as very outgoing saying she would talk to everybody there OK, she was always there to lighten the mood, not showing up for work the next day wasn't like her at all. Uh, so the manager became suspicious. Uh, we kind of knew something was up. We had been calling her all day. And remember, they knew that she had gone to meet this guy for a date just the day before. Now, one of Robinson's friends called the police that night saying that she had not turned or returned her calls or showed up for work. The criminal complaint says, and now police visited Robinson's apartment for a welfare check, but did not find her there. The restaurant closed for three days during the search for Robinson and authorities discovered a grisly set of clues. The morning after her date with Robinson, uh, Robins, uh, I'm sorry, with Anderson, Robinson's vehicle was discovered on fire. Now, the 2020 Civic has sustained extreme fire damage, completely damaging the interior, according to the criminal complaint. Despite the fire damage, authorities were able to identify the outfit Robinson had been wearing uh, the night of the date, as well as an iPhone consistent with her phone in the burned car. Later the same day, police were called to the scene of another gruesome discovery, a woman, a human leg on the beach in Warnemont's Park. Now, the Milwaukee uh, suburb of Kudahi, uh, which appeared sewn off at the hip. According to the complaint, this is awful. An examination determined the leg belonged to a black woman, approximately five feet tall. It was identified as Robinson's leg uh, using preliminary DNA evidence. Now, on April the 6th, as police canvassed the area where Robinson's car had been found, uh, they identified more remains, including a human foot and what appeared to be human flesh. All appeared to come from the same person. This is all just so depraved and sick. Phone records found by a friend of Robinson's and her mother using a uh, phone records were found by a, by a friend of Robinson's and her mother using a location sharing app, uh, which detail, which was detailed in the complaint. Now, they saw uh, that Robinson's phone traveled the night of April the 1st from the seafood restaurant to a nearby sports bar, and then to Anderson's home and then to the park where the remains were discovered. On Friday, Wisconsin authorities charged Anderson with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating the corpse, and arson of property, 
uh, other than a building. He would face life in prison if convicted on the homicide charge. Now, the complaint details evidence that police say ties him to the crimes, including surveillance video. Okay, witness accounts as well and phone records. Authorities also found blood in Robinson's house and several gasoline containers. The complaint says that evidence led authorities to conclude Robinson was dead. They say the fact mentioned in this complaint uh, caused complainant uh, to conclude that the defendant intentionally killed and then dismembered Robinson with the intent to conceal the homicide. And it occurred between the arrival at the defendant's residence and his departure from the Warnermount Park area. Now, Anthony Cotton, an attorney representing Anderson, uh, told CNN that his client is presumed innocent and we will fight the matter vigorously in court. Now, at Friday at a news conference, police said uh, the search for more of Robinson's remains and and other evidence continues. Okay, let me see. They have a GoFundMe for Robinson's memorial service. Uh, they described her as a loving daughter and a cherished sister and a dear friend to many. Now, let me see if I can pull up this press conference. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Let me see here. And this is all crazy because remember, there was another college student that went missing uh, just a few weeks ago and turned up, was found dead. And that was a male. That was a male. So let me continue. I'll look for that in a second. Now, um, at the at Friday's press conference, police said the search for more of Robinson's remains and other evidence continues. Now, when asked if her office was reviewing other cases of missing women for possible connections, Milwaukee County Sheriff Danita Ball said, uh, so far, there hasn't been any evidence that there has been any other victims. First of all, that's because you haven't found any other evidence. Do you hear that? That's just a lazy thing to say. Uh, so far, there isn't any evidence that there's other victims. Well, you haven't looked for any. You haven't looked for the evidence. You don't know if there's evidence until you find it. Okay. This is all so crazy. So far, there isn't any other evidence. I'm sorry. Could you please try to look for some first? So anyway, says uh, after Anderson's first court appearance, Robinson's mother, Sheena Scarborough, called his arrest justice for Sade. They say um, Robinson, originally from Mississippi, was, was about to graduate from Milwaukee Area Technical College and pursue a career in criminal justice. Now, the pain of losing Sade has left a void in the hearts of her family, especially her grieving mother and little sister, along with other relatives, friends, and the entire community who loved and supported her. Okay, that's what it says. So I just find this all so crazy. You think this man, that was his first time at the rodeo? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think that absolutely um, he's done this before. And especially these people that meet people online on these dating apps. Very dangerous business that people get into. And I know I told you all, somebody had the nerve to tell me I was old fashioned because I was telling people not to use those things. Very interesting. Okay, so here's a, a press a conference right here, a press conference uh, that they're showing. I'm going to share my screen. And this looks like it was from about four. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Leon said, "I'm old school. You come, you come to the home, and we know who. We know you walking out. <laughs> we know you. Okay. It's the end of the day. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Here we go. Now let me put a little overlay on here or something." Like, sub, beloveds, like, and share. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
an ongoing investigation for human remains that we discovered early last week. And uh, again, all the subsequent information that has come after that. I have to tell you, this briefing may be brief because there are a number of questions we may not be able to answer. That said, uh, Chair Paul, Chief Norman will give you what they can. And uh, on that, I will uh, hand it off to the chair. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Today, we're going to give a brief update regarding the severed leg that was found and some of the human remains that have been found throughout Milwaukee County. As you know, on April the 2nd, at approximately 5.29 p.m., Milwaukee County 911 dispatch received a call from Cudahy Police Department regarding a severed leg at Warnermont Park. It was near the golf course and the uh, pumping um, house. And so uh, the leg was amputated from the uh, around the hip down. And uh, as a result, the, um, the leg appeared to be that of an African-American female. Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer who was aware of our investigation raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting. And that uh, missing person was Sade Robinson. So um, on Wednesday, April the 4th, our investigation led to a person of interest Maxwell Steven Anderson, who lives in the 3100 block of South 39th Street, where he was arrested after a traffic stop near the home. A search warrant was conducted. The severed leg has been preliminarily identified as belonging to Ms. Robinson. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Robinson family, friends, and the Milwaukee community who have embraced this family. We are sorry for your loss. It's such a tra tragic incident. Our investigators have worked around the clock on this investigation. As a result of their diligence and with the help of our criminal justice partners, the district attorney's office issued charges today against Maxwell Stephen Anderson for first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse and arson of property other than building. He remains in custody. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office would like to thank all of our partners involved in this investigation, specifically the Milwaukee Police Department, the Cudahy Police Department, the Kenosha Police Department, the Madison Police Department K-9 Unit, Great Lakes Search and Rescue K-9 Unit, the FBI, the ATF, the Department of Justice's uh, Division of Criminal Investigation and their Crime Lab, the Medical Examiner's Office, the District Attorney's Office, the Milwaukee County Transit System, Wisconsin Southern Railroad, the United States Coast Guard. A complaint that was filed by the district attorney this morning. What we can share at this time is this. On April 2nd, Milwaukee Police Department investigated an arson at the 2800 block of West Lisbon Avenue. Video surveillance recovered from the arson investigation led investigators to search the area of 3000 West Queen Street. Friday, April 5th, investigators located human remains in the area. Saturday, April 6th, MPD continued the search of, in the area and located additional human remains on the railroad tracks. Later in the evening on Saturday, April 6th, MPD returned to the area when Ms. Robinson's family located her blanket. At this time, detectives located additional human remains. The, the identification of human remains recovered by MPD are still pending. I repeat that. 
the additional human remains is still being looked at and the investigation is pending in regards to the identification of that. Please note, we continue to search for additional evidence that has not been located. Anyone with information is asked to contact Milwaukee Police Department at 414-935-7360 or to remain anonymous, contact Crime Stoppers at 414-224-TIPS or P3TIPS. We're grateful for the efforts of the Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office, and other Okay, so that's just absolutely crazy to me and very sad, like I said, that something like this happened. If she had not mentioned it to her friends, no one would probably even have a clue what happened to her or who did it. It could have been days before it was even found out. So condolences to the family. Very sad set of circumstances. Now let's talk about this man who took the life of uh, an Uber driver. We're going to talk about what happened first because I now have the update of this story that happened a few days ago. Shocking video captures scam victim pointing gun at innocent Uber driver before allegedly killing her. Now, the newly released dash cam footage of 61-year-old driver uh, Lolita Hall's car shows 81-year-old William Brooke of South Charleston approaching her with a gun at 11.20 a.m. on March 25th. And when she tried to get in her vehicle and leave, Brooke allegedly uh, struck, struggled with her and then shot her in the head or shot her dead. I'm sorry. And then shot her dead. Now, it says, unbeknownst to Hall, the suspect was the victim of a phone scam in which he his incarcerated relative threatened him and his family and demanded money. Here's the thing. I want you all to pay attention. I'm not saying that he wasn't the victim of a phone scam. What does that have to do with him taking this woman's life? Okay, because he says that he feared for his life, but he's the one with the gun. She had none. He's the one that chased her around her vehicle, shot her in the leg first, and then came back and shot her again. So I'm sorry, where's the fear in that? It doesn't sound like he was fearful to me. And so anyway, the driver had also been contacted by the same person or an accomplice instructing her through the Uber app to pick up a package for delivery from Brooke's home. Now, when she arrived, Brooke allegedly demanded that the armed, the unarmed woman identify the person who contacted her and grabbed her phone as she in uh as he refused to allow her to leave. Give me the phone. Give me that phone. He can be heard saying during the distressing video. Stop, stop, or I'll call 911. She yells back at him. Uh, then he shot the woman three times before calling 911. Brooke reportedly told the uh the dispatcher that he shot someone who was trying to rob him. Uh, so uh, they say that first responders rushed Hall to Miami Valley Hospital where she died uh, during surgery. Hall suffering from mental conditions and an unarmed and unarmed made no threats or assaults toward Mr. Brock. OK, and uh, made no demands other than to ask about the package she was sent to retrieve through the Uber app. So this is according to the sheriff's spokesperson, the sheriff's office spokesperson. Now, they say due to there being no active threat presented by Miss Hall at the time during the encounter, uh, Mr. Brock's failure to contact authorities for assistance while brandishing a firearm during which he fired at fired at and struck Miss Hall several times. Oh, he was arrested and charged with murder. OK, so let's just go to the news report. This is all sad. Condolences to her condolences to her family, too. They're going to try to use a sad excuse for this man. Please pay attention. <laughs> We now have dash camera video from Uber showing the moments leading up to an 81-year-old man shooting and killing a driver. This is a story we first brought to you last month here on News Center 7. William Brock faces murder charges. He claims he shot the woman in self-defense. News Center 7's Malik Patterson joins us live from Clark County. Malik, the new video is giving you better insight into what happened here. You also got some new information from investigators today. That's right, Gabby. In my hands is the latest from Clark County Detectives, and it breaks down what exactly they gathered here from this home in South Charleston Clifton Road, plus the new dash cam video. But I have to warn you, we took out some of those parts of the video out of respects for the victim. 
Yes. On March 25th, just after 11 in the morning, is when we first see Lolita Hall on her Uber Dash camera walking to William Brock's home to pick up a package. According to the incident report, this is after she sat in the driveway for 25 minutes, trying to figure out where the front door is located. It was around 1119 is when you first see Hall and William Brock first come into the dash camera together. Hall is holding her phone and glasses in her left hand and Brock has his gun pointed at her. We cannot make out what he told her, but we hear Hall saying, The loud boom you hear is Hall opening her car door. Brock then tells Hall she is not going home. No, you're not leaving. Right. Yeah. Just three seconds later, Brock opened fires and shoots Hall in her left leg. We cannot air the rest of the audio, but Brock chases Hall around her car and shoots her two more times. Coming up at 6, we will revisit what the suspect had to say and why he felt fearful for his life before this altercation happened. In South Charleston, Malik Patterson, New Center 7. Okay, so that's his story and he's sticking to it, saying that he felt fearful for his life, like I said. But he was the one clearly being the aggressor. Okay, this is all so crazy. Now, I'm going to give you all an update on that shortly, but I want you to first see this video of a TikToker who's being held in jail illegally, according to him. So let's talk about it. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Just 
claimed I spit on him, which was a lie. Then I asked, where did I escape from? And they could not give me a clear answer. The next day, I had court on a Zoom call. The judge then told me my charges and my bond amount was equal, close to $100,000. This was about 10000 through a bond company. After sitting for a week, I got the money to my bond money and was finally getting out. My family waited for me for hours just to be told I wasn't getting out and that I had a new charge which was paid to appear to court. No bond. After hearing the news, I felt defeated, angry, and sad all in one. My family then contacted the lawyer and was told the FTA charge didn't exist. The next day, the lawyer told my family the DA filed a motion to have my bond revoked. They then called the jail asking when do I go to court for the new charge, but no one could give a clear answer. The first person said I had went earlier that day. After telling my folks that was a lie, they called up here again and was told I go Wednesday. Wednesday came and I still didn't go to court. So my folks called again and they were told that I go Friday. Friday came and they called my name for court. Thinking I was finally about to get answers, I was took in front of a telephone and was advised Judge Johnson wanted to speak to me. He then called me by name and after I answered, he told me I had court on March 14th for the juvenile case when I was 14. He then said, looks like you caught some new charges. And that is when the correction officer told me to come on. I said, that's it? She said, yes, without letting me ask any questions. At this point, I was lost, but I still managed to keep my cool. After a few more days of sitting in jail, I learned from one of the other inmates that after they revoke your bond, they have 72 hours to take you in front of a judge. And the judge has to explain to you why your bond is being revoked and provide evidence. I also learned if this doesn't happen within 72 hours, they have to release you. So my folks ended up finding me a lawyer. We paid them $2,500 up front to come talk to me. Once the lawyer got here, he seemed clueless on what was going on. My folks had told me they had already spoke to the lawyer and told him everything, so I was clueless on why he didn't know anything about my case. The lawyer was very respectful as I sat and told him my case. He wrote down what I told him and then handed me a card with his name on it. But his name wasn't the name of the person my family said was coming to speak with me, so I was confused. After coming back to my dorm on first grade and out of money, I then decided to make a GoFundMe to basically raise money for another lawyer because I just had a bad feeling about the one I had just hired. I tried to get my money back from them, and they told me they can only send me 1500 back. After a day of my GoFund being up, I raised $1,800. I felt love for the first time since I had been here. Real love for my fans and supporters. The next morning, I called my family excited to see how much more money I had made. And that's when they told me the GoFundMe had been deleted. Everybody's money was refunded. I didn't know what else to do, but my family convinced me to keep posting. I raised another $800, and with a little help from family and friends, I found another lawyer. Agreed to put me on the payment plan, since I couldn't come up with a full lawyer fee. Yesterday, yesterday night, a little before 11 p.m., I was brought a piece of paper stating that I had court on March 14th, which I already knew. But what threw me off was the paper said that I was pretty much brought before a judge via telephone, basically saying that he explained to me why my bond was revoked, which was also a lie. So I'm guessing they took me in front of the phone that day to cover their tracks because they knew they only had 72 hours to get me in front of a judge as they revoked my bond. I felt something was off that day I spoke to the judge over the phone because it was so rushed. And why was he talking to me over a phone instead of on a video call or in person? I'm assuming so it wouldn't be recorded. That way it's my word versus his. The paper also stated that I was going to court March 14th for probation revocation which also confused me because I've never had a probation officer and I have never been on probation. It also states that this paper was filed on the 23rd day of February, a few days after I tried to bond out. I've been here for almost a month and I still haven't heard anything else about the phase of the court charge, which was the charge they originally said was the reason I couldn't bond out after I had made bond. The charge my lawyer said didn't even exist. My family even called the jail numerous of times asking if he missed court and if he did, what day did he miss? My family has yet to get a clear answer. They either got put on hold or even hung up on. So basically they held me illegally buying them more time to speak with the judge so he could revoke my bond. Now the real questions are, why would I willingly come to the sheriff's office knowing I had warrants out for 
Sorry, I forgot I removed myself from the screen. But this is absolutely crazy. First of all, none of what he said makes any sense. How are they able to get away with this? Okay, now that was from when he first was put in jail. But I've been following to see the updates and he's still there. So with that all being said, my question is what happened when he went to court or did he even go March 14th as they said he was supposed to be? Uh, but here is something he posted yesterday. Please pay attention. So still in there, I'm going to share my screen again.
calling in the office every day trying to get in contact with these people. They hang up on I'm guessing they was false or they was threatened by these people. I don't know what's going on. After that, I paid another lawyer 3500 So basically, we just trying to see what they do. You know what I'm saying? But So this is all crazy, okay? These lawyers are all in cahoots. That's how that's going. All right, this man's been held in there since February. All on trumped up charges, according to him. Now, this is absolutely egregious that these things are allowed to happen. And then someone said, I think it was Terry Hinton said, why did they take down the GoFundMe? Well, because GoFundMe's are not allowed to be put up for people accused of violent crimes. And so by the fact, I guess, that they charge him with uh, resisting arrest and uh, assault with bodily fluids, I guess that's violent to them. So likely why they uh, took it down. Okay, this is all crazy. Leon said Department of Justice silence. The Department of Justice probably hasn't even heard about this case. Okay, the Department of Justice hadn't heard about this case. You all hadn't even heard about it. I'm just saying so. Quite frankly, who's going to call the Department of Justice? His family probably hasn't. All they've been doing is trying to get different attorneys and getting stiffed as it looks uh, every time this happens. So anyway, sad set of circumstances. Now, I'm going to call down there and see if I can get some answers and see what's going on. All right, because I have a whole lot of questions. Uh, with that all being said, let's talk about it. Because as I was telling you, the woman who was shot by the, the Uber driver who was shot and killed... Well, here's what they say. Law expert says why the castle doctrine is not valid in the Uber scam case. Okay, because that's what he's trying to say. Castle doctrine, you know, um, stand your ground and all of that. So the 81-year-old man is accused of murdering a 61-year-old Uber driver from Columbus. A scam confusion left 61-year-old Lolita Hall dead after she showed up to 81-year-old William Bro uh, Brock's Clark County home. Uh, she was there to pick up a package on the Uber route. Investigators say the package pickup order was all part of a scam. They say Brock was also part of the scam, receiving a call about an incarcerated family member who led to threats, uh, which led to threats for money and demands for money. Now, in the confusion, investigators said that when Hall showed up, Brock held her at gunpoint before shooting her as she tried to get away. Please pay attention. Key words here. She tried to get away. How is he the one fearful if someone's literally trying to get away from him because they're fearful? Pay attention to how they try to swip it and, and, and switch it and flip the narratives. Brock now faces murder charges, as he should, dirty devil. Uh, but he is not the only one who could be facing the, these charges. Okay, investigators are currently trying to track down where the scam calls came from and whoever was behind them. Uh, so, for example, if you conspire to do something like that and then someone ends up killing the person that you conspired with, uh, you can be charged with murder. But most people don't really know that, said Mark Clausen, a uh, professor of history, law and donors. I'm sorry, and honors at Cedarville University. I want you all to pay attention to something. Listen to what they said. They're trying to act like this black woman was in on the scam. They said... For example, if you conspire to do something like that and then someone ends up getting killed or someone ends up killing the person you conspired with. So they're trying to act like she was in on it. How do they know if she was in on it or not? Okay, quite frankly. Now, they go on to say that's the way to demonize the victim so that people don't have empathy and sympathy for her. You see this all the time with people who look like me happening to them, okay? Although the incident happened on Brock's property, Clausen says uh, that the Castle Doctrine, which allows you to use force to protect yourself, cannot be used in this case. Uh, saying you're dealing with someone coming into your home with the intent, the obvious intent of doing harm. Clausen also talked about the penalties, uh, what the penalties would look like if investigators are able to track down the person or people behind the deadly scam. It depends partly on the jury partly to, on the judge and sentencing uh, phases, those kinds of things, he said. So I just want you all to pay attention. Like I said, they don't have any proof, nothing to substantiate that this woman had anything to do with any darn scam. And was there even a scam or did he just make that up? I have questions because he could have just made that up just to get out of murdering somebody because why are you sitting here scared for your life? If you're scared for your, your life, go in your house and lock your darn door. 
and call 911 and stay inside until the police show up. What you don't do if you're afraid or fearful of your life is come outside, pull a weapon on the person that you're fearful of, and then chase them around the car and try to keep them from leaving because you're so scared. How does that make sense? How does that make sense? Well, it doesn't. Okay. It's on my last nerve. Now let's talk about Biden. Biden tells Net uh, Netanyahu U.S. will not participate in a counterstrike against Iran, which I'm sure Netanyahu found interesting because this day is before that Biden warned Iran. Okay, so let's get into it. U.S. expects Iran to carry out a direct attack on Israel. Sources say Biden warns don't do it. As if anybody's listening to him, silly old fool. Hold on for a second. Air is so soft and so smooth. I'm starting to get carried away. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Smooth Bear. Designed with smooth tear edges, Charmin Ultra Soft Smooth Tear has wavy perforations that tear so much better for a smooth, more enjoyable go. Mm. Hmm? Mom, you okay in there? I'm terrific. Enjoy the go with Charmin. How imminent do you think the attack on Israel is from Iran, Mr. President? I want to hear this information, but my expectation is sooner or later. Okay. What's your message to Iran in this moment? Are American personnel at risk, Mr. President? Mr. President, are our American right troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. Now that's what he said days ago. That's what he said days ago. Now, Biden tells Net Netanyahu, U.S. will not participate in any counterstrike against Iran. So, I'm sorry. This is getting more and more nefarious. Please pay attention. Biden, make up your mind. That's all I'm saying. So, what are you thinking? I'm thinking about our honeymoon. What about Africa? Safari. Hot air balloon ride. Swim with elephants. Wait, can we afford a safari? Great question. Like everything, it takes a little planning. Or put the money towards a down payment. On a ranch. In Montana. With horses. Let's take a look at those scenarios. JP Morgan Wealth Management has advisors in Chase branches and tools like Wealth Plan to help keep you on track. When you're planning for it all, the answer is J.P. Morgan Wealth Management. President Biden speaking on the phone with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the heels of Iran's significant attacks against Israel uh, Saturday night. According to the White House's official readout of the phone call, it says, uh, I've spoken with Prime Minister Netanyahu to reaffirm America's ironclad commitment to the security of Israel. I told him that Israel demonstrated a remarkable capacity to defend against and defeat even unprecedented attacks, sending a clear message to its foes that they cannot effectively threaten the security of Israel. Uh, we are also learning from a senior administration official that the president uh, told the Israeli prime minister that he should consider tonight a win, that the U.S.'s assessment uh, right now is that Iran's attacks had been largely unsuccessful. And the reason uh, that this is the U.S.'s assessment right now according to this official, is that almost all of the drones and missiles that Iran uh, launched Saturday, including more than 100 ballistic missiles, were successfully knocked out of the sky, we are told, and no cruise missile made impact in Israel. And we are told, essentially, that nothing of value was hit. Again, this is the U.S.'s current uh, assessment of the situation. Uh, importantly, we are also told that the president told the Israeli prime minister that the U.S. will not participate in any offensive operations against Iran. So very noteworthy that this is sort of the president drawing a line uh, in terms of what the U.S. is not willing to do to uh, help Israel if it does, in fact, decide to potentially retaliate against Iran in a significant way.
Now, uh, the president's statement tonight also uh, noting that uh, no U.S. forces or facilities were attacked tonight, but it did also say that U.S. forces would, of course, remain vigilant. Uh, deterring this was a, a very uh, important goal for U.S. officials uh, in recent days, with the U.S. actually directly communicating with Iran and basically warning them that they should not come after U.S. personnel and assets in the region. Uh, the one thing uh, that this senior official I spoke with would not get into is what, if anything, the president might have advised the prime minister to do in terms of how Israel uh, might retaliate or might respond in the coming hours and days. Of course, that is such an important question and such an important space to watch, given that the Biden administration is very set on uh, trying to uh, contain this situation and trying to prevent a wider regional war from erupting in the Middle East. MJ Lee, CNN, at the White House. Okay, so you all heard that. Biden talks tough one minute, then retreats the next. Please pay attention. Uh, Michael M. said, that's all propaganda. Leave the mainstream media and the truth. Okay. They need to sit down somewhere. I find it also nefarious. But ne but in the meantime, between time, let's talk about these uh, huge mammy dolls that this woman is selling. And they're selling off the shelves like hotcakes. Okay. Clearly racist. Uh, but they've been talking about it all over TikTok. All right. So let's get into it. Lights up, everyone. Please like and share. I'm going to share my screen. Thank you in advance. Okay. I've never made a TikTok like this before, but I just want you guys to know what's going down in my hometown of Beckley, West Virginia. Please go back and watch her video if you can. Um, it's very important that you do because the situation she's talking about gets worse. I no longer live in Beckley, but I grew up in Beckley and I work in Beckley. I'm at work right now, so I can talk about this. So the Carpenter's Loft is this primitive kind of contemporary store uh, here in Beckley. Um, they sell all kinds of decorations and indoor outdoor stuff, you know. But the kicker is these racist dolls that they've been selling, um, they didn't make them. They came from someone else and they've been reselling them. These dolls originally came from a shop in Ohio. It's like Hinton Primitives and something, something, something. You'll see here in a minute, I have screenshots proving that these came from a different company. The Carpenter's Loft is advertising them in a very specific way, and you're about to see why. They called them garden dolls, but that's not what they were originally named. Hinton Primitives and Christmas Tree Farm in Ohio refer to them this way that I am not comfortable repeating. So yes, they were oriented to be a representation of minstrelsy, obviously. It's disgusting. <laughs> And it doesn't stop there because they've made plenty more. Clearly, here's another example of them making a door hanger or sitter. Terrible word that I don't want to repeat. This is not inclusion or diversity in contemporary or primitive decoration. This is a, romanticized, a romant, romanticization of slavery and minstrelsy and racism. Do not give the Carpenter's Loft your money, your business, your time, but that Hinton shop in Ohio, do not give them your time, your money, your business. Take it elsewhere. Order it off Amazon if you have to. Don't go to those places. Hi, Benji here, and I'm going to explain why these dolls are inexcusably racist. An Essex pub is currently in the news as its landlady is defending their display collection of these dolls. She says she's not racist and that the dolls are just harmless reminders of her childhood she displays because she loves them. But they're not harmless at all. Writer Florence Kate Upton, who created the character the dolls come from at the end of the 19th century, based them on blackface minstrel shows which were intentionally degrading performances where white actors would paint themselves as grotesque caricatures of black people to portray them as being lazy, uneducated, animalistic criminals. The character's success drove the production and popularity of these dolls during the 20th century. And the dolls have helped fuel the continued perpetuation of racist prejudices and stereotypes about black people to this day. Not only do the dolls mock black people, but their name is also used to racially assault them. Furthermore, the second part of the doll's name is a racial slur of its own, and this is where it comes from. As a symbol and tool of racism, they are inexcusably racist. And it's also inexcusably racist to prioritize the nostalgic desires of those who love and own such dolls over the threats they pose to the health and safety of black people. Hope that helps. Bye. 
on a regular basis, my comment section, particularly my Instagram, is inundated with people who say that, oh, you're racist. You're bringing up race. You're always putting race in it. Why shouldn't we when shit like this is going on? I want y'all to meet Miss Paula Mullins. She's out of West Virginia. She's the owner of the Carpenter's Loft. Good Christian woman, huh? <laughs> she does what she does because Jesus was a carpenter. They always love Jesus. All the time. Here's Paula's business. Paula likes to sell dolls. <laughs> Paula and her friends love it. This particular woman waited for her dog to be made. Do you know how demented you got to be to want some shit like this in your house? Uh, 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 but, 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 but when Paula was asked about it, I mean, she... She said, no, 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 no. Uh, it's not like that. They're not slave dolls. Okay, so you all see that foolishness. This is what people have time to do. I mean, you have to ask yourself, like he said, who wants that in their house? Okay, who wants that in their house? You have to have something wrong with you. All right? Just absolutely crazy. Mr. Elevation said, why the dolls got to be black? Well, if they weren't black, beloved, they wouldn't want them. They're black because they're mammy dolls. They're remnants of the Jim Crow era and slavery. That's why they want them. If they weren't black, then there'd be no need for them. They wouldn't be hot commodities selling off of shelves, beloved. That's how they do. Okay, that's how they do. Yeah, Claudette says sick puppies. It's absolutely deplorable, okay? I find it all so sick, all right? But this woman, hey, we're not racist. These are not slave dolls. That's her justification. And there was even a clip that I put in there uh, from a guy from the UK who says that they sell different dolls over there, but nonetheless, the racist. And they sell off the, cake, off the shelves like hotcakes. I mean, this is nothing new. I told you all, I showed you the video of how they had these things that were, they look, they were pieces of chocolate shaped like hands. They look like chopped off hands, severed hands of black people, many of whom uh, are these black people that were killed over in the Congo, okay, by Leopold II, who would have their limbs chopped off if they didn't do enough work. And sometimes if they didn't do enough work, not only would he chop off their limbs, he'd chop off the limbs of their children just for good measure. Okay, but this is people that they praise over here in the United States. They have statues and monuments built for this man in his honor. But Candace Owens once foolishly said that it is black people, the people who look like me and her, uh, that in fact praise and worship our criminals. That's what she said. I want you all to pay attention to that as she tries to weasel her little way back into black society now that her handlers, I, a.k.a. masses, have kicked her to the curb. With that all been said, I'm out of here. Everyone enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloved, to keep the most high first in your lives. Also, let me say, I won't be on the uh, spiritual channel today. I'll be on there tomorrow. What's going to go today, but something has come up. So I'll see you all in there tomorrow. Okay, so each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloved, to keep the most high first in your lives. Slaves all in my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest 
right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all in Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get mad <laughs> So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they next Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people are waking Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And Say now I got gold all in my skin in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done, they show no love for the queen, why they hating on me, is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin, God all in my blood, my blood. kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done, That's they it. show no love for the queen, why they hating on me, is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... <laughs>